Ford dropped some big numbers for 2020, right? That's right. And this video has everything to do with a 6.7 liter power stroke V8. And well, let's say the numbers first. And then the main point of this video is how did Ford arrive here, right? <laughs> because they're rated at 475 horsepower mm -hmm. and 1,050 pound-feet of torque. Now those are both class leading numbers. So what we're able to do is we're able to put together those numbers with the actual person who's in charge of that engine development and give you a package so you guys get the inside scoop on this. This is our third generation uh, 6.7 liter power stroke engine. The original was launched back in April of uh, 2010. Second generation came out for the 2015 model year in, uh, in uh, April of 2014. So yes, technically it's a third generation power stroke. The original came out in 2010, Right. then the second gen was 2015, mm -hmm. and now 2020, we get our biggest uh, power numbers, obviously. And where, where is this going to stop? Well, that's the thing. I mean, who comes out with the higher number next? Yeah. I have a feeling that Ram will. Uh, Ram does not like playing seconds when it comes to you know working with Cummins and the amount of power that they produce and the amount of torque they produce. So I have a feeling they're going to hit next. So let's talk about those numbers. To go a little bit deeper into the power stroke numbers, uh, first of all, it was a big improvement just for Ford themselves, right? They went from 450 horsepower. Right. They improved their power output by 5.5% approximately. That's okay, right? Mm, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good improvement, yeah. um, generation to generation. But they stepped up their torque in a big way up to um, 1,050, mm -hmm. which is a 12.3% improvement. Right. Now, if we look at the competitors out there in terms of what their output is, you have Chevrolet, then you have Ram, then you have Ford. That's where it is now. Now, Chevrolet, their 6.6 .6 liter Duramax uh, puts out 445 horsepower and 910 pound-feet of torque. So actually, Chevy's got a lot of horsepower, right? Mm -hmm. their, their V8 engine is pretty powerful as far as horsepower, but 910 pound-feet of torque seemed like a big number a couple of years ago, but now it's third place. It is indeed. Then you have Ram's 6.7 liter Cummins engine. Now that puts out 400 horsepower, but a thousand pound feet of torque. That's a maximum tune, right? Yeah, and this is their high output engine. So right. they have two versions of it. Uh, mm -hmm. The regular Cummins uh, with lower power numbers, right. and this is the high output version of, of their engine for their dually trucks and 3500s. That's right. And 400 horsepower. Dude, th that's 75 horsepower less than the new Ford. It's crazy. So the bottom line is Ford had to come up with a new strategy with their engine. And it's fortunate we have David to kind of take us through this, right? And Ford touched basically every area of the new engine. Um, fuel delivery system. Uh, the turbocharger was very important. Right. And the pistons and kind of the design of the combustion chamber as well. Um, also, here's David to describe all those changes because it's getting pretty complex. We've got a new 2500 bar or 30, 36,000 PSI uh, operating pressure fuel system with an upgraded fuel pump, which you can see here, upgraded high pressure lines, and uh, all new fuel injectors to handle that higher operating pressure and higher fuel flows to uh, deliver higher uh, uh, engine performance. Injection. So we have uh, up to eight injections per cycle uh, to handle all the operating modes that a diesel engine can uh, see in the environment that our customers put these trucks in. Uh, we have a new turbocharger with uh, lower inertia for a better throttle response and we also have a redesigned vane kit that uh, directs the air into the turbine wheel that is, uh, offers improved fuel efficiency and performance. Right down in here, these veins are now on a uh, revised carrier that pins both sides of the veins with an axle instead of just one, which allows us to run tighter vein side clearances than before, improving throttle response and efficiency. The other thing we've changed here on the turbocharger is we've gone to an all-electric motor actuator such that it is now, uh, response is now improved in uh, colder climates. Okay. The previous uh, second generation was electrohydraulic. Uh, we have a variable displacement oil pump uh, to offer more oil pressure when you need it uh, under heavy loads and lower oil pressure for better fuel economy when the, the truck is operating at, 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 at part load. And um, 
just going back to the fuel system really quick. So it's now higher pressures than ever before. Yes. How much higher? Uh, it's about 20% and okay. it goes up to 2,500 bar uh, or 36,000 uh, PSI in English units. You're pointing to the oil separator here. So this is a, uh, this is a, a revised for, 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 for the next model year as well. We've continued to refine this to try to mitigate compressor fouling as much as possible. We have revised this uh, lower intake manifold. This used to be made from aluminum. We're now making it out of plastic to save weight. And, uh, and improve insulation. Uh, this upper intake manifold is now made out of aluminum. It had been made out of plastic. We did that on account of uh, better heat protection because it sits right on top of the turbocharger. Okay. Uh, the air path through the turbocharger is the same as before. Air goes into the compressor here, comes out this discharge pipe here, goes over to the charge air cooler in the left front corner of the vehicle. The charge air then comes back uh, after it's been cooled off with our low temperature cooling loop, which is uh, segment exclusive uh, so far, into the throttle body. And then that goes through the EGR mixer here. And we talked about the EGR cooler before. Right yeah. Then we're going into the intake manifold here. Here's the fork in the road where that splits and you feed each bank of cylinders uh, mm -hmm. through uh, rocker covers that also act as the air path to get the air from the intake manifold down to the cylinder heads. So where do we go from here? So what are the towing numbers on this new Ford? They're insane. Uh, <laughs> we have best-in-class towing and best-in-class payload, yes. right? 37,000 pound maximum towing. Am I correct? And this is with their new diesel. Right. So when you equip your 2020 Ford, uh, this is an F450, two-wheel drive. This is a very unique truck, right? So there's, right. There's not many of these trucks will be sold. You have probably. to get a very specific model to make this happen. Yeah. And with a diesel, by the way, it's made it to a 10-speed automatic. Right. So this is uh, another new item for 2020. And obviously, no journalists have driven this combination yet, so we can't tell you how it drives. Mm -hmm. But you can be sure we'll be testing it on the island. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. The internal structures of the engine are upgraded for the higher, uh, the higher uh, performance uh, that causes the engine to run at higher cylinder pressure. So we've upgraded the cylinder heads, the cylinder block, and then back here you'll see that the uh, uh, piston and rod assembly are also upgraded to handle these higher uh, to hi handle these higher operating pressures. I uh, still have four valves per cylinder, uh, still the same cylinder head layout, uh, and we still feature the inboard exhaust layout like we had before that offers us better throttle response and better heat management than if the exhaust were on the outboard side of the V. And that's because the turbocharger is in the valley, Yeah, the, right? the turbo's in the valley, so it makes sense to have the hot parts all in the valley. Uh, it's, it, it, it saves on economies of space, and then you don't have hot parts on the outside of the engine where you're having a steering shaft run by on the left-hand side and having air conditioning and heating accessories on the right-hand side of the vehicle. So it, uh, it definitely improves the heat management uh, in vehicle. I can say that the second and third generation engines weigh approximately the same. It's a pound or two either way. I can't remember exactly, uh, exactly which way it went, but we, we strove mightily to keep the uh, upgraded version essentially weight neutral, while at the same time improving performance improving NVH and improving fuel economy. By the way, the maximum payload is 7,850 pounds, but this is with a gas engine. So right. these numbers, because the diesel engines weigh more than gas engines in general. So you drop a little bit with the, your payload. Yeah, so that maximum payload number, you have to get a 6.2 actually, uh, which is still available. But a lot of you guys have asked us, what about the F-350? You know, you keep talking about the 450 numbers. Right, right. What about the 350? Well, it's actually pretty good as well uh, for 2020. 35,750 pounds. That is really remarkable, considering that that is a truck that anybody can buy. Yeah, and it's a little bit, you know, le less expensive than the 450 trucks. Um, and it's actually, uh, that rating is higher than the highest ratings from Ram and GM. That's right. There will be multiple ratings because we have two distinctly different usage profiles. We have our pickup truck applications which are chassis certified or emission certified in vehicle. Uh -huh. uh, those will all get the same rating okay. as they do today. 
And then we have our dynamometer certified uh, uh, strip chassis, or what we call chassis cabs, where there's dump trucks, boxes, commercial uh, utility, vehicles. commercial vehicles. Yeah. Those are our dynamometer certified uh, ratings, and uh, there'll be one rating for the uh, for the uh, P uh, or for the uh, F450 and 550, and then we have our medium duty truck, the F650, 750, for which we have uh, three different ratings: 330, 300, and 270 horsepower. Okay, so depends on the usage, I guess. Depends on the usage, right? Now, what about this diesel power plant in something that I'm interested in, or right. Ford Tremor? Well, it's available as well. So the off-road package for 2020 is the Tremor package, and it gives you a few goodies, right? Uh, a small lift, like a leveling kit almost, right? Yeah, yeah, two inches in the front. It gives you a um, uh, electronically activated rear diff that locks, which is awesome. Yeah. It gives you off-road tires and off-road suspension and armor underneath. And basically, it's something that is built to go against the, the Ram Power Wagon, which is obviously one of my favorite vehicles. But what's cool about this is that Ford is giving you this massive diesel option, which is something Ram doesn't offer. Right, and you can offer a Tremor in either F-250 or F-350, so you can get different ratings right. for payload. By the way, up to 4,200 pounds on the Tremor for payload, which is a huge number compared to power wagon which is around 1600 pounds right actually. it's considerably more so yeah. very different trucks uh big difference between them right off the bat uh no locking front diff which is interesting because you can get that on the ram and also no disconnectable front sway bar once again available on the ram so you get some things with the ford you get some things with the ram we're really looking forward to testing them yeah and by the way gm new heavy duty trucks also have a 10 speed automatic with their diesels so this is going to be a great competition. Can you see that drag race coming up? Oh my God. Well, you yeah. have the eight speed transmissions, you have the 10 speed, you have the 10 speed, yeah. you have different levels of torque, a lot of horsepower on some of these, not as much horsepower, but a lot of torque. I mean, it's crazy. It's going to be really interesting. By the way, a lot of viewers out there give me a hard time for drag racing heavy duty trucks and actually testing uh, their acceleration times for some reason. Mm. Uh, they're saying heavy duty trucks are for towing why are you racing them but i think we need to know like when you're merging on a highway when you're you know um carrying something you need to know how quick the truck oh, is. oh hell yeah not yeah. only that but it's fun well that's the big <laughs> biggest reason to do it yeah a lot of people out there even though some of you are vocal about and thinking it's not a big deal a lot of you actually enjoy having that and our numbers kind of prove that the other thing to thinking about is absolutely being able to merge quickly with a dry vehicle and there's another thing, not all of these trucks are driven every single day towing a load or driven often as a daily driver, which means that some people are interested in how they perform without the heavy load. But see, here's the cool part. We also test them with the heavy loads. We're I taking gauntlet. them, I gauntlet baby, we do MPG loops, we do it all. So you're gonna get all of that in the near future. Absolutely, it's gonna be a great competition, I think, as far as towing. Ram comments is always there. Of course, GM is always tight oh, in yeah. this competition because they up their ratings as well. So stay tuned for that and go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and... Real world reviews. For sure, real world. <laughs> we don't mess around. We don't mess around. <laughs>